The murders of Ronnie Gorlin and Elise Rapp in 1975 occurred less than two weeks apart. Both of their cars were found at the 163rd Street shopping mall in North Miami. Both cars had deflated tires. Their bodies were found close together in the same canal. Police were virtually certain that the same individual had killed both women. Some have commented on the possibility that the Zodiac Killer or Ted Bundy were involved in these murders. I've discussed the possibility that Bundy was in South Florida in 1975 in other podcasts. I have not yet discussed the possibility that the Zodiac Killer, who operated in Northern California in 1967 through approximately 1970, could have been involved in the flat tire and canal murders in South Florida in 1975. This is not the first time that the Zodiac Killer was mentioned in connection with crimes in South Florida. The Gold Sox Strangler, who operated in South Florida in 1973, was profiled and bore a strong resemblance to the Zodiac Killer. Dr. Raymond Killinger, a Fort Lauderdale psychologist, reviewed the Gold Sox Strangler's crimes and noted that the killer may have been someone who would leave clues or otherwise insert himself into the investigation. He was reminded of the Zodiac Killer, who sent cryptograms to newspapers discussing his crimes and taunting the police. During the 1970s, a serial killer was also active in Sonoma County, where a series of murders known as the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker killings occurred. During that time, Ted Bundy was active throughout the West Coast and was retrospectively looked at as a possible suspect in these murders. Sonoma County Sheriff Irwin Carlstead noted that they also looked at the Zodiac Killer as a suspect, but ruled him out because the Zodiac murders did not involve sexual assault, which were present in many of the Hitchhiker murders. In reviewing the Zodiac crimes, it is interesting to note that the 1966 murder of Sherry Jo Bates, which is possibly linked to the Zodiac killer, involved a killer who used a similar modus operandi to lure his victim into his grasp. In that case, the distributor cap on Sherry Jo Bates' car was disabled by the killer, who likely approached her when her car failed to start offering to help. Once he was able to lure her away, a vicious attack ensued, which resulted in Sherry Jo's brutal murder. The Zodiac's attack at Lake Berryessa involved the killer using Brian Hartnell's car to write a message to law enforcement, confirming that he had committed this act. Also, the murder of Paul Stein involved a vehicle, namely Paul's taxi cab. Finally, the Blue Rock Springs and the Lake Herman Road shootings also involved the Zodiac driving up behind a parked vehicle and attacking his victims. Similarly, Ted Bundy was finally captured in 1975 when he attempted to abduct Carol Durant at a shopping mall in Salt Lake City. Bundy approached Carol and stated that her car had been broken into He claimed to be an undercover detective and said he needed to take a statement from her. He then was able to get Carol into his car and told her they were going to drive to the police station to make a formal statement. Instead, he began driving Carol away and attempted to attack her. Fortunately, she fought back and escaped. The murder of Sherry Jo Bates, possibly by the Zodiac Killer, as well as the attack by Bundy on Carol Durant, shows strong similarities to the flat tire murders in an important way, namely that the killer felt that the best way to lure his victim away from a position of safety in a public area into an isolated area where he could attack her was by disabling her vehicle and posing as a good Samaritan. Does this mean that the Zodiac Killer or Ted Bundy killed Ronnie Gorlin and Elise Rapp? That remains subject to debate, 
But I think it's important to note that these attacks indicate that the killer was organized and rational, had a plan, and was able to convince the victims he was harmless and indeed helpful. With his charm and pleasant demeanor, coupled with the disabling of the victims' vehicles, he was able to move the women from public areas to isolated areas where he was in a position of control. In all of these cases, the car plays a primary role. These are not home invasion murders or abductions in a dark alley. Rather, rather, the victim's vehicle, as well as the killer's vehicle, are objects that are central to the commission of the crimes. The vehicle is both a crime scene and a method to remove the victim from a public place to an isolated location. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to learn more about the flat tire murders, my book is available on Amazon in the link below and through other booksellers. Thank you for listening. Please leave any comments or questions below.